Today I'd like to talk about our standard US quarter all metal coin mechanism. We'll go over how it operates and uh, some of the adjustments on the coin mechanism. At the top of the mech, the coin enters on this side right here, and the coin is delivered to a cradle. This cradle is a little pivoting device that swings and delivers the coin onto a small ramp here and once it gets onto the ramp it goes past a magnet which is here and I'll explain what this magnet does in just a moment but then after it passes the magnet it comes to the lower portion of the mech and it's going to hit the separator which is on the back and I'll show you in another slide here and then once it hits the separator it separates either a accept path which would be on this side or a reject path which would be on this side Getting back to the top of the mech, once the coin enters the cradle, it has to push away an undersized lever, which is this little lever right here. When a good coin enters into the cradle, it needs to move this little undersized lever out of the way. The right diameter coin will push this lever out of the way just enough so that it clears the cradle leg so that it can deliver the coin into the coin path. If the coin is too small of a diameter, it's not going to push the, the cradle, uh, the undersized lever out of the way, as in this particular scenario. You can see that it's not pushing the undersized lever out of the way and it gets caught on this little hook right here, which will stop an undersized diameter coin. Once a coin is delivered to the rail, it has to go past this magnet assembly right here. This magnet assembly acts as a tri-purpose device. One is this magnet is going to stop ferrous metal coins, washers, Canadian coins such as that Canadian coin right there. It also acts as a sizing device for overly thick coins. If your coin is too thick, it's going to stop past this device here, and it's going to this surface right here where the magnet is. The coin is going to stop here if it's overly thick. The adjustment to this magnet holder is this screw right here. If you turn this screw in clockwise, you will move the magnet farther away, allowing thicker coins to go through. If you turn this screw counterclockwise, the magnet will go closer to the main plate and will make the coin path thinner. So if your coins are getting stuck behind this magnet and they are not ferrous material, it's likely that this magnet is too close to the main plate and you'll have to turn this screw clockwise to bring the magnet away to allow the thicker coin to get past the magnet. The magnet also acts as a device to slow down copper, any kind of coin that has copper or brass in it. When a coin is rolling past this magnet, eddy currents are generated inside the coin and those eddy currents develop its own magnetic field which actually bucks this which means that it will slow the coin down ever so slightly and it will change the velocity of the coin. And that change in velocity of the coin allows it to land on the, on the separator, which is down below here, and kick the coin either to one side or the other. And let's uh, take a look at what that separator looks like down below. Here's the separator right here. Once the coin is delivered into the coin path, it gets swung and it goes this way and depending on its trajectory based on the magnetism and the eddy currents in the coin it's going to strike this little lever here and it's got to strike the lever in such a way that it's going to bounce off this lever and come down this path here and I'll show you with a real quarter the coin bounces on the right side of the diameter of the coin and brings it into this accept path. If the coin is traveling too fast after it's delivered, it's going to land on the far side of this, this little uh, kicker and it's going to drop into the reject path here. There's an adjustment for this, this little separator. There's this screw right here. What you can do is start with this adjustment all the way to 
this side. And if you drop coins, you'll notice that a lot of them are going to reject on this side. Then you would slowly move this adjustment mechanism over in this direction here until you reliably accept the, the, the real coin that you want to take. One other thing I like to mention about the cradle is you want to make sure that your cradle is free to move. Uh, the cradle has a, a brass bushing onto a highly polished metal pin and you want to make sure that the cradle moves freely. The cradle has a small weight on it and that weight is sized to the particular type of coin you're accepting in, in the mechanism. Uh, the cradle can easily be removed by removing this small e-clip here. Uh, you can clean the uh, cradle bushing with pipe cleaner. That's a very convenient way of cleaning the, the bushing. And then clean the pin off also. If you have some graphite or even the, uh, the graphite from a pencil, you can put some of that on the pin and the bushing to make sure that the cradle is, is, is free to move, such as you see here. Over time, your magnet in this mechanism may collect a lot of um, filing dust, uh, metal filing dust from uh, various types of coins going through, fraud coins, or just dust in general. And it may stick to the magnet. One of the easiest ways of removing any metal filing dust that uh, tracks itself to the magnet is to take a screwdriver and wipe the magnet clean using the tip of a screwdriver. The filings will have a tendency to collect on the very edge or tip of the magnet. So you can try using uh, a flat blade screwdriver to wipe the magnet clean of filings. If you have any other way of uh, uh, blowing air to remove the filings, you can try doing that too, but that's a little more dangerous. Uh, I recommend trying to wipe the magnet clean with a, uh, with a screwdriver. Here's a back view of the coin mechanism with a Canadian coin stuck to the magnet. And I'm going to press the reject lever to show you how the reject lever wipes the stuck coin off of the magnet. I'm going to press it slowly and you'll see the coin moving to a point where it gets rejected from the magnet. Press the reject lever, the wiper lever inside wipes the coin off of the magnet. So every time you press the reject lever, the wiper arm comes down and wipes the coin or token off of the magnet. At the top of the mechanism where the coin enters, there are two tabs that are built into the gate that actually size the diameter of a good coin, in this case a U.S. quarter tabs are formed in such a manner that it will allow a 25 cent U.S. quarter to pass through. Like that. I also have a slightly bigger 984 token that you will see stops right at the very top of the mech because the two bent tabs are not allowing the 984 token to pass. So your mechanism will stop 984 tokens which is a very similar or very close size diameter coin that's used in the industry and it's slightly bigger than a quarter and this mechanism will stop that. You simply press the reject lever to reject the coin.